During our last video, we talked about the definition of a mole and that the mole is a specific number. So if I wrote out the first thing a mole is, I would write a mole is, and then the first thing that a mole is, is it's a number. A number. And we found out that it's a very, very large number. We found out that one mole was equal to, and I'm going to write the shortcut of it, 6.02 e to the 23rd. Um, typically, that is a number of particles. Now, the particles can be atoms. They could also be molecules. They could also be, if you're talking about an ionic compound, formula units. So those particles, one mole of whatever you're talking about is going to be that number. It's just a mole is just simply a number. Well, when we look back at our article that we annotated, our introduction uh, article to the mole, we found out that one interpretation is a mole is a specific number of particles. And that number, we said, was about 602 billion trillion. And we rounded it to 6.02. Instead of adding all of this on, we said, well, we don't write pi as 3.14159287 and continue on. We just cut it off at 3.14. We're doing the same thing with a mole. So one mole is equal to that many particles. Well, those particles might be atoms, they might be molecules, they might be formula units. So one interpretation of a mole is a specific number, and that number is 6.02 e to the 23rd. When we get to the second page of the article, the second piece talks about the second interpretation is it's a specific mass. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video, is not only a mole is a number, it's also a mass. So the second thing is it's a mass. And specifically, what we're going to be talking about is we're going to be talking about what is called the molar mass. That molar mass is defined as the mass of one mole of substance. So the term molar mass is just equal to the mass of one mole. Whatever we're talking about, we might be talking about a mole of atoms, we might be talking about a mole of molecules, a mole of formula units, but it's just simply the mass of a mole. The molar mass is simply the mass of a mole. So where does this mass come from? Well, the mass actually comes from the periodic table. And we're going to be looking at the average atomic mass to be able to find the mass of a mole of substance. So we're going to be using the periodic table. So the way we're going to be interpreting this is, let's say that we had oxygen atoms, atoms of oxygen, and we're placing oxygen atoms. There's a reason I'm not going to do oxygen. It's a diatomic molecule, so I'm going to pick a different atom. We're going to pick calcium. So let's say we pick calcium, and we're taking calcium atoms, and we're placing calcium atoms onto a scale, onto a triple beam balance, and we're adding calcium atoms on one at a time until we finally add 602 billion trillion. We're going to put 6.02 e to the 23rd atoms of calcium. Well, it just so happens that that many number of atoms of calcium happens to be exactly one mole. Well, if we put one mole of calcium, 602 billion trillion atoms of calcium. What this is telling us is 
the balance will read 40.08 grams. 40.08 grams. That is the molar mass of calcium. The way that we would write that is we would say that one mole of calcium, one mole of calcium, Adam, is equivalent to 40.08 grams of calcium. We also know that how many atoms we have of that substance of calcium. This is the molar mass, the mass of one mole. One mole is just that many atoms. Where do you get where that mass would be? It comes from the periodic table. So let's take a look at krypton. What if instead of having calcium, we have krypton? So once again, we take a balance and we start adding. This time we're adding atoms of krypton on the balance. And we keep adding until you get the idea, until we get 6.02 e to the 23rd atoms. Once we get 6.02 e to the 23rd atoms, this time of krypton, we know that we have exactly one mole. Just like if we put two atoms on, we know we have a pair. If we put 12 atoms on, we know that we would have a dozen. Well, if we put this many atoms on, we know that we're going to have a mole. If we put that many atoms on of krypton and we have one mole, we go to our periodic table and we look up krypton and it states 83.80. 83.80. So that means that the balance is going to read 83.80 grams if we have a mole of krypton atoms. This 83.80 is called the molar mass. The way that we would write that is we would say one mole of krypton is equal to 83.80 grams of krypton. Earlier I started to do an example of oxygen. The issue is oxygen is a diatomic molecule. So in real life, it doesn't exist as just an atom of oxygen. It'll exist as O2. So when we say oxygen, if we say an oxygen molecule, that means that every time I put a oxygen on, really I'm not putting just one on, I'm putting two on because they're connected. So it's oxygen and another oxygen and another oxygen and another oxygen. So let's say that I put 6.02 e to the 23rd, but this time not atoms because I can't call this an atom because they're connected. I'm calling it a molecule, 6.02 e to the 23rd, molecules of oxygen. Well, if I put that many on there, it's still going to equal one mole of oxygen, but not oxygen atoms, oxygen molecules. So that means every time I put one on, really I'm putting two atoms. So every time I put one on, I'm not putting 16.00, I'm putting double that. So I would need to write it as one mole of O2 is equal to, well, it's not 16.00, it's going to be 32.00 grams because it's an oxygen molecule, 32.00 grams of O2. And this would be the molar mass, the molar mass, the mass of a mole of oxygen molecules is 
zero zero. And I'm going to do one more example for you. What if we had water? So water molecules. Well, we know that water is H2O. So if I wanted to find what is called the molar mass of water, every time I put one of those on, it's got one O with two H's. One O with two H's. One O with two H's. So one mole of H2O. Really, every single one has two H's and one O. So every time we put one of these on, it's two H's and one O. Well, the O, each O is worth 16. And each H, we're going to round to the nearest tenth, so it'll just be 1.0. But there's two H's that are each 1.0, so that will count as two and then 1 O at 16, so it will total to an amount of 18.0 grams. It's like going to the store and buying two H's. Well, the H's cost a dollar, and the O's cost $16. So when you're checking out, two H's and one O is going to be a total of 18. And the way that we would write that, the molar mass, we would say one mole of H2O is equal to 18.0 grams of H2O. This would be the molar mass, the mass of one mole of our substance. So we've talked about a mole is in equal to a specific number, and we've also talked about a mole is a specific mass. I hope this helps understanding the concept of a mole.